Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. As always, usually would have uh, Chris Kane de Wandu who joins the conversation on Off the Press this morning. It's good to have you join us, Chris. Good morning, Kofi. I hope you had a nice night. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And I hope you did too. I did. Okay. I wouldn't want to talk about what is affecting us all, but uh, maybe the papers might, might cover it. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Let's not go there. <laughs> All right, then let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. As always, we'll pay attention to the banner caption on the Punch. The banner caption says, Al Makura Adamu Yari orders learn fate as aspirant screening holds today. Governors initiate last minute move for consensus candidate, APC Kakas hasn't endorsed any chairmanship aspirant. That's what Senate is quoted to say. And this is about the APC chairmanship. Uh, these are the riders underneath the board caption. Massive oil theft threatening external reserves revenue, MPC is quoted to say. And talking about bad fuel, marketers submit report on damages, await federal government's compensation. And subsidy, you have the FAAC meets today as NMPC deduction threatens state's allocation. We won't allow 242 billion naira deduction from match allocation. Uh, that's what Delta is quoted to say, Delta State. And uh, just before we move away from the punch, you still have interesting headlines. Lagos, Ogun, Rivers, leader state debt heat. 6.43 trillion naira in 2021. This is according to DMO. And you have NAVDAG once again for male sexual enhances or enhancing drugs ingredients. Uh, you still have another thing you desert or your community as soldiers drafted to maintain peace killed. Very sad. Federal government scraps the PCR test for fully vaccinated travelers and unvaccinated teenagers. Obiano water drinking video, EFCC sanctions official, uh, ex-governor gets bail. Uh, these are some of the headlines you find this morning uh, on the Punch newspaper. Again, bandits raid Kaduna Zamfara, Q62, abduct 62 and raise 70 houses. This is really, really sad. But that's it on the punch this morning. And over to the Daily Independent with these headlines. Rising insecurity. Buhari deploys more police, DSS, and SCDC operatives to Imo. We're reaching out to aggrieved politicians, Uzo Dimma, and that's the governor of Imo State. A lot happening in Imo State as far as insecurity is concerned. Of course, uh, yesterday the president uh, it was announced we will be meeting or has summoned uh, some persons, including the governor of Imo State, for a meeting on Wednesday uh, afternoon. More from that paper. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria warns of looming job losses, urges government's intervention in energy crisis. Bandit scale 37 abduct 62 in Zamfara communities. Details on page 6. Court Sachs 20 Cross River APC lawmakers. Panic in Nigeria as COVID-19 re-emerges in China, Germany, France. And when will we hear the end of this? Nine years after, Buhari commissions new Lagos Airport terminal today. EFCC grants ex-Governor Obiano administrative bail apprehends official who leaked Obiano's video, referring to that 12-second video clip where he was seen drinking a bottle of water in uh, boxers, shorts, and a t-shirt. Uh, more from the Daily Independent, CBN keeps rates, suppliance, engagement with NNPC over fuel scarcity. And finally, Buhari APC betrayed Nigerians, says Yakasai. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Daily Independent. Uh, let's uh, quickly look at the leadership newspaper this morning. He says, after two months of scarcity, Central Bank of Nigeria words into fuels crisis. Uh, it's a bold caption to fund PMS importation distribution in talks with electricity regulators to improve power supply. No increase in petrol depot price, NMPC is insisting, and long queues persist as scarcity worsens. These are the uh, riders underneath the bold caption. Convention, APC begins screening of aspirant. And you also have court declares 
So arrest, arrest and detention illegal, just as you have Agba Jilingo being uh, freed, of, I mean, freed of all uh, terrorism charges. President Mohamed Buhari's commission new Lagos airport terminal today. Uh, that's also another one. 23 killed, several houses burned in fresh Kaduna attacks. Or attack and court sacks 20 uh, Cross River State lawmakers over defection to the APC. Nigeria, United Kingdom launch device to tackle climate change. <laughs> Very interesting. And you have 2023, Niger governor directs aides with ambition to resign. These are the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. And we take a final one, uh, headlines from the front page of the Nigerian Tribune with a big headline there. Defection, court sacks 20 Cross River lawmakers and uh, following writers, we are not aware of the judgment sucking us. Speaker, he's one of those affected. Court strikes out Umahi's motion to stop execution of judgment and issue certificate of return to Agariwe Udogo now, PDP tells Zainek. Those two are the, um, the names given to Zainek by the PDP in Eboy status governor and deputy governor in place of uh, Umahi. Details of that on page two of the Nigerian Tribune. More from the paper. APC convention protests over consensus candidate for national secretary. No position taken on chairmanship Senate caucus. Uh, governors have resolved differences. Nasarawa governor and screening of aspirants to commence today. Uh, the APC Senate caucus had to come out to deny the news making the rounds that they had endorsed a candidate or certain candidates. Uh, details on page 26 and 27 of that paper. More from the Nigerian Tribune. CBN retains NPR, that's the interest rate, at 11.5%. Uh, says Russia, Ukraine war poses risk to global economy. Bandits kill 23, burn 70 houses in Kaduna, in two Kaduna local government areas. A government declares 24 hour curfew. Please confirm killing of 16 in Zamfara. And this is one killing too many, GAN. And those are the writers to that headline. OAUVC, if a indigents go fetish, protest block major roads. OAUVC, if a indigents go fetish, protest and block major roads. Uh, we just uh, looked at that in a trending segment. Emo security crisis, what I told President Uzo Dimma what I told the president by Uzodema, emo security crisis. What I told the president uh, by Uzodema, a number of rulers decry Obiano's ill treatment in EFCC custody and plane carrying 132 crashes in China. These are the headlines on the front page of the uh, Nigerian Tribune. Chris Kende Wandu is a chartered mediator and consulator, and he joins us now uh, as we look at these uh, headlines. Um, uh, uh, Chris Kende, once again, good morning to you. And uh, uh, let's uh, begin with a look at the, the economy and the fact that the, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria, which meets uh, regularly through its Monetary Policy Committee um, has for some months now been retaining Nigeria's um, uh, uh, interest rate or the monetary policy rate at 11.5%. And what they're saying now is that the Russia-Ukraine war um, is posing a risk to the global economy. Um, are you impressed with the, uh, with the way the Central Bank of Nigeria has been handling the economy, especially now that they're saying they're not going to change the rates and they are also pointing the finger at the Russian Ukraine crisis as, as, a, as, as it affects, you know, not just the Nigerian economy, but the global economy? Well, if you ask me whether I'm impressed, uh, I won't say I'm impressed. Whatever economic formulation by the CPN or the monetary team or the economic team of the federal government, whatever they do, in as much as it doesn't uh, reflect in the purchasing power of Nigerians, or the average man on the streets, as far as I'm concerned, to just be um, just rhetoric. Um, we are re retaining the interest rate. But let me ask you how many Nigerians um, have the opportunity of going to walking into any bank and picking up loans, as it were. Uh, apart from the collaterals that will be asked, you also say that interest rates, most often than not, what is given by CBN are not adhered to by the various banks. So, it is just for the papers. Um, the SMEs, the SMEs are practically where we're supposed to invest more and give loans or give opportunities uh, by the banks. 
are practically dead, and if this is as dead, the level of unemployment is on the is on the rise. Most Nigerians can't find a job, and when CBN, when I see some of these policies coming from CBN and some other agencies of government, I just laugh my head off because on ground that is not the reality. If you go to the market now, as the prices of goods and services will be shocked. Um, look at gas. Gas has uh, the average gas that I think is 12 kg or whatever has moved from about three uh, three thousand five to five thousand as of last week, which was about nine eight eight thousand five hundred nine thousand. And Messi will tell you also, as I always said, Messi uh, goes to the market and he tell you that the, the prices of meat, the prices of fish, and other <laughs> rice and commodities have um, have increased. So, to me. Whatever policy we take, in as much as it does not reflect in the life of the average Nigerian, that to me is, is always the issue. Then let us even look at the Naira. How much is the Naira? Um, I'm talking, sorry, the dollar. How much is the dollar to Naira now? Those, that is where the issues are. So I think we should be doing, for me, the central bank should be doing more and making sure that our SM, where I want us to focus on is on SMEs. And we cannot even do that because we don't, we're not, we don't even have power. Electricity is the engine room of powering SMEs across the globe. So if they don't have electricity, your electricity is dropping from 4,000 4, to about 1,003 1, or about 2,000, and you are seeing a collapse of um, national grid on a weekly basis and the rest of them. How will these um, um, SMEs suffer? There are some Nigerians that if they don't go out in a single day, they won't be able to eat because they make their daily, they make uh, their income on a daily basis, and that is how they feed. So, well, um, for the, as I said once again, until average man feels the impulse and effect of this so-called uh, indices that are being uh, pushed out by CBN, uh, to me, it will just be... Yeah, Chris, like can you hear there's, there's a story that, that you can link to, so we don't uh, go back to it. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, on the front page of the Daily uh, independent, which uh, has some very interesting headlines these days. Um, warning of looming job losses and governments uh, urging the government to intervene, you know, intervene rather urgently in the energy crisis. Uh, quickly, just you can link that to what you just said before we take the next headline. Yeah, I have already said it. I said that the employment, our employment rate is so high. And he's talking about also the energy sector. And that also discussed, I've said that as well. Yeah, I said that. We are practically running on ground zero when it comes to the power sector. You see the national grid collapsing on a daily basis. We move from about um, 4,000 uh, uh, megahertz in, uh, in 2015 when this government took over. As of last week, from what I read and from what I heard, we are running, we are just shortly between 1,003 to about 2,000. That is almost 50% cut off, uh, short of what we had in 2015. And this government promised that on a yearly basis, in 2050, they promised that on a yearly basis, they are going to add 10,000 megahertz to, into the national grid. I'm sure you are aware of that. You can go and go for it. It's there. 10,000 every So if they've been adding 10,000 every year, by now we'll be having about 70,000. But we are talking about about 3,000, 4,000, and 2,000 compared to 70,000 they promised us. How do we intend the, the economy? The economy cannot grow. The the, 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 the the even those that are employed, most of the companies that are employed, most of them are sacking because they cannot even meet their own personal needs. It's very very difficult, and and we have thousands and thousands of graduates um, leaving our universities on a yearly basis and not finding work. Insecurity is on the eye. So we, I don't even know where to start from. And this government just has barely less than one year to go. It is not looking up uh, at all, my brother. All right, let's just stay with the CBN. And this is on the leadership newspaper. It talks about the fact that the CBN is intervening in the issue of fuel crisis. It says to fund PMS importation and distribution. Just as you were talking this morning, you have mentioned the fact that the Central Bank of Nigeria needs to do more. Maybe this is also a way of, you know, savaging the situation. It's just a short, it's it, it, that is short, that's what is called short term and long term measures. What the CBN is doing is a short term measure. Where the problem is not just um, subsidizing or uh, giving up money for importation of fuel. What I thought that the CBN would be telling us now they're releasing money or enough money for us to build new refineries and also maintain the ones that we have. 
without so much, so many turnaround maintenance. We have have billions and billions of uh, naira budgeted for turnaround maintenance of refineries. The one in Kaduna, the one in Port Harcourt, the one in Wari. Till now, not a single single liter of oil have been uh, refined by those uh, uh, those refineries in the past few years. Not a single. And we only go to the budget and see how much will be every year that we budget for uh, turnaround maintenance of those things. The EFCC is not even doing its job. The EFCC and ICP should be going into some of this, uh, so into this in the oil sector. Look at what is happening in NNPC. Look at what is happening in the oil sector. How come that we budgeted so much for turnaround maintenance of this refinery? And where did those money go? Who collected those money? How we, can we have a checklist of what has been done? How come we cannot refine a single liter? And Kofi Messi, let me also tell you that staff of those agencies, those refineries are collecting their salary. Kofi, their salary cannot be compared to what you are earning. I can tell you that for free. It cannot be compared in any way. And they go to work on a daily basis and we cannot have anything that. So that is the issue. That is the problem. So it's not a short term for me. This is just like Yoruba will say, you leave the men uh, koro koro, and you are just uh, trying to scrub lakba lakba. <laughs> Messi is laughing. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. All right. So if we are to be looking at the long term, measure, not the short term. Yes, you give them money. What of aviation fuel? Have you forgotten what is happening in the aviation industry? The president is going to commission the new, uh, the ultra modern uh, um, international. Um, Tamam. Mohammed Airport today. I'm sure you are aware of that. Of course. But the airlines are going to use this. Practically, they are almost dying because they cannot even find a vision for to run. So that is where the problem is for me. So giving money and pushing that money for well, how long can we continue importing? And will be because if the, you know the crisis that is going on in Ukraine now between Ukraine and Russia is affecting the world uh, uh, oil market. Yes, yeah, so any more. But as much as we're any more from crude, we are also spending so much more to import petrol. This seems to be the only country in the world, and we we'll continue to say it, that has crude in very millions in quantity, but end up selling crude and importing. Uh, so I shouldn't be thinking that CBN should be encouraging them. For me, let us build our own refinery so that we can be self-sufficient in some of these products. All right. Th thank you, Chris Kenuwanu. Um, let, let's go back to the... Uh... Uh, the Daily Independent, it has uh, a bit, it's, its leading headline on its front page this morning. Uh, Buhari deploys more police, DSS, and the CDC operatives to Imo State. And of course, we heard that the president had uh, summoned to meet with um, the Imo State governor, as, as well as the, um, uh, the Minister of State for Power and the Minister of Power and Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. But on the Imo State matter, um, the Independent Daily Independent says that President Buhari on Monday ordered the deployment of more security personnel from the Nigeria Police Force, the Department of Security uh, Services, and the Nigeria Civil Defense Corps with additional arms and ammunition to tackle the growing insecurity in Imo State. The paper is also going on to say that this is coming after the attack in Imo at the weekend where gunmen set ablaze the home of uh, the President General of Hwaneze in Igbo, Professor Giorgio Biozo, uh, prompting President Buhari to summon Governor Hopens or Dima to brief him on the security situation and factors militating against uh, the return of peace in the state. Uh, over to you, Chris Kenny Wand. Well, the situation is in the state uh, is not new. Uh, for some time now, there have been serious uh, security breaches in the state. Um, the latest being that so many um, uh, uh, police stations were bombed. Uh, same with the room of the President General of an SND. Um, what is happening in Imo State is quite unfortunate. And I have always believed that the security agencies knows those, know those behind this uh, act. Nobody will tell me that they don't know. DSS cannot tell me they don't know those behind it. And the police cannot tell us they don't know those behind it. That is their job. If they don't know, let them investigate and make sure that some of these people are. And the worst part of it is now we have termed them unknown government. And when that to me is a, a, a term that even with the media should try to shy away from. They are not spirits. These are human beings. And they know we, most of the security agencies know where they are coming from. If they have sponsors, then we should be able to arrest their sponsors and make sure that this is nipped in the bud. Um, the security situation in Imo State is so terrible that uh, even on Mondays, you see that the city at home is still holding in places like Imo, Anambra, and some other parts of the state. Governor, um, Governor Charles Toludo, um, 
a um, few days ago said that he's ready to talk to IPO members so that I can bring some level of security in Anambra State. We also know that secu um, Anambra has also have its own share of insecurity. But um, I still believe that the leaders in Imo State, uh, fortunately, I'm from Imo State, I believe our leaders, those leaders of thought and our exes, the chiefs, uh, our traditional le uh, leaders, uh, local government chairmen, and all forms of government, and including the governor, still have enough to do. All those things happen in various uh, local governments, and nobody will tell me that this, um, the local government chairman or the uh, traditional rulers don't know some of these youth who are perpetuating this evil. So um, they should, we should be able to bring, uh, put hands together. Deploying uh, policemen is not just enough. What I believe that we need more in Imo State is more inter intelligence gathering so that we can be able to preempt some of this attack. Not after it has happened, then we are now finding the situation. Policemen are being attacked. How come policemen are being attacked and their uh, police stations are being burned? And some of them are being killed. Some were killed a few days ago. And that to me is not enough. So, yes, I agree with the president that you can deploy more policemen, uh, civil defense. But if we are not working on our intel, intelligence gathering, and be able to get the, uh, the confidence of the people on ground, some of these people can give information. But the problem is that if they give them this information, how oh, they be sure that this information will not get back to this so-called or no government or uh, miscreants who will not use it against them. If we can be able to build the confidence in terms of capacity of people believing in our security agencies, I'm sure they'll be able to get as much as many information as they want. All right. So Chris Kane and Wandu, let's look at this uh, also. Uh, it talks about the fuel subsidy, or subsidy if you want to put it, on the Punch newspaper, uh, the FAAC meets today as NMPC deduction threatens state allocation. And underneath you find Delta State saying we won't allow uh, 242 billionaire deduction from March allocation. I mean, haven't we gotten to a point in this country where, you know, we have to, I mean, states, I mean, you look at the states, 36 states, they have to be very dependent on what comes in at the end of the day. Is it not time that we begin to think, you know, outside of this pattern that we have been running for a very long time? And think of how, because this would also threaten, and think of how, um, you know, states can be self-sufficient. I know this conversation has been going on for a long time, but it feels like we keep going in circles and we keep talking about it. Uh, don't we think that right now states will not be able to meet up with their, you know, several obligations? For instance, payment of salaries. You want to talk about other projects. It's under threat. If you have constantly um, the fact that there will be deductions and then states begin to quiver and then they begin to, you know, shiver and what have you. Should we not be thinking outside of the box? Should we not find a way of how states should be able to sustain themselves without depending on what comes out from this, you know, um, allocation? Mercy, this is a broken record because several times on a daily basis we talk about it. So I don't know what is new for us to talk about because we are not doing what we are supposed to do. And as rightly said, every month the state government or the state, uh, yeah, state government go to Abuja to buy share. Um, revenue uh, uh, from the from the NMPC, um, also from uh, uh, FIRS, uh, BAT, and the rest of them. And the problem I've always said is that it's because our gov uh, our state government or governors are not taking the report. They are not creating enough. And a part of the problem is also the issue of the constitution. Until we take out with the constitution the way it is presently, and that is what I thought that the, the National Assembly should have done during the uh, review of the Constitution. They never, they never did it. They were more interested in those issues that affect them and that will benefit them. That is why you're talking about direct or no direct primaries. And those are not the problem of Nigeria as for now. Yes, it could be, go a long way in enhancing mm -hmm. our ele uh, electoral values. But when you talk about devolution of power, we are so much power is concentrated on the federal government, and that federal government has no, doesn't know what to do with it. You realize that most of these states don't have power over the mineral resources in their states. It is exclusive; it's of the exclusive list in, in, in the constitution, the 1999 constitution, as amended. It's within the exclusive list, so it's not even concurrent. List. When you have a concurrent list, that means the, the state and the federal can legislate on those issues. But these are exclusive. So, and you have most of this. The, uh, uh, minerals that if I allow the state government to be able to participate or take um, 
take charge of it. Then there's possibility that they'll be able to make money. But the, uh, the, uh, the constitution, as it were, doesn't give them that leverage. Go to Ondo State, go to, we have Butamin in Ondo State, go to Osho State, there is gold, um, go to um, Enugu State, there is coal, go to even the, go to Joss, you can see the mining, illegal mining is going up. So, but the, and you go to Kogi State, Kogi is one of the richest um, states in this country. They have so many mineral resources that, left alone, Kogi can stand on its own as a state. In fact, it's a country on its own. But the fact remains that they have not been given the way with that. The federal government is not making it easy for them. Look at ordinary roads. You realize what happened a few months back, where the Minister of Wars came to say that even the roads, the federal roads that passes through some of these states, that if the state government repair it, and they are not going to refund them. Kofi, I'm sure you must have, you read that that time. Yes, but that's what, that is what I think is that we need to do the needful. Presently, as it were, the hands of the state government are tied. And only where they generate so much income is from tax fees. And who are, what are you taxing? Is it people that don't have job? Is it people that their businesses have collapsed? Where are you going to get the taxes from? And okay. you see that on a daily basis, you see if you move out from Lagos and you're going towards Benin, you see a lot of all those local government boys putting nails, you see them every day, putting nails under your tire and the rest of them, trying to harass Nigerians and the rest of them. If the states are made to be viable enough, then some of these issues of going to Abuja every day to share money will just be a, a thing of the past. But All if right. we don't really need to, that is what we continue to find ourselves. All right. We, we, we have uh, more stories from the Punishing Super still talking about, you know, uh, the, the fuel situation. Um, we have uh, the CBN, or rather a monetary policy committee, saying that uh, massive oil thefts threatening uh, it external reserves and revenue. But um, a, a, an, an interesting one on top of that is a bad fuel. Marketers submit report on damages awaits federal government's compensation. Bad fuel, marketers submit report on damages awaits uh, federal government's compensation. What the punch is saying is that oil marketers have submitted uh, the collated reports on the effects and consequences of ethanol blended premium motor spirit publicly called petrol to the federal government. And it says that the marketer stated on Monday that the bad fuel, which was imported into Nigeria in January, had damaged the vehicles of some uh, petrol users, while many filling stations that uh, purchased the product had incurred l huge losses. Um, so w what are your thoughts on this? Because the punch had exclusively reported last month that all marketers were compiling the losses that they, they incurred as a result of uh, this bad fuel. Um, Kofi, is this is only economy we're discussing today. When are we discussing politics? When are we'll we get, discussing politics? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But but Nigerians okay. Nigerians went okay. through a lot to, I mean, some had their generators going bad, some had their cars, the engine destroyed, the engines knocked, as you say, in this part of the world. And uh, we've I, not I heard totally, anything about I that. I totally, I totally agree with you. I understand what you're saying. I'm only saying that um, political decisions also affect economic decisions or some of the economy. So we also talk politics. But let's move on to this. It's the fact that um, many vehicles are damaged. Um, the NNPC said that they're going to investigate, and um, those that imported the, the, had those uh, uh, over 100 million liters of um, um, bad fuel came into the country. But don't forget that NNPC practically imports about 80, 90 percent of um, uh, petroleum products in Nigeria. So are they investigating? They say, what was the, what is the outcome of those investigations? If the oil marketers are not saying that they are putting in um, uh, requests. Uh, for compensation damages. That means it is on the laps of the NMPC. That means they, they are holding the NMPC um, responsible. Don't forget that NMPC initially named some uh, independent oil marketers as importers of those fuel, and they quickly denied it. They denied it. And you are talking of compensating uh, the marketers. What of those that had their vehicle damaged? Who is going to compensate them and how would they be, get compensated? So many, some vehicles. We are done because they do, when they use those well and they are very good damage and they packed it up, who is compensating them? But that is where we find ourselves. And it's just going back to what I said earlier on. Until we do what we ought to do, this is what will be happening. Because when you continue to depend on your neighbor to be feeding you on a daily basis, then whatever I give you, you take. If I want to eat rice now, I'll tell my wife to cook rice for me. But if I'm going to depend on my next neighbor to do that, whatever it has, if you give me Indomie tomorrow, I'm going to eat Indomie now. They say a beggar has no choice. So that's the situation we find ourselves. And because of that, a lot of people are cutting corners, trying to make sure that they cut corners. 
Kofi, you are still aware that it was said that about 106 million, um, uh, uh, what's it now, 6 million barrels of um, um, crude oil was stolen and missing. I'm sure you read that too. Nobody has come out in now to tell us how those uh, uh, 106. It, 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 Nigeria at times, I just say Nigeria is a joke. It's unfortunate. It's like Charlie Boy show. On Charlie Boy show, anything can happen because you cannot predict Charlie Boy. <laughs> so, and that is the situation of Nigeria now. It's just uh, this is what we that is how we roll. And we continue as if nothing happened. Next time you see another one will come up. They said you, you forgotten how much they said they are going to use to clean that bad well. Yeah, you, uh, you know, Weasley, there's what my people call cheap boy and also in the, you know what it means. Every day, new story. Every day, new issue. Well, that's, and that's we, we, we see. Within 24 hours, we forget the one that happened yesterday, and we move on as nothing happened. Well, that's it. Thank you so much, uh, Chris Kane and Wandu, for being part of the show this morning. We really appreciate your time, always. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you, Chris. Chris is actually chartered mediator and consulate. Uh, consolator uh, is always here with us every Tuesday morning. Uh, we look forward to having more of him, but that's the much we can take on after press. And just before we take that break, let's let you know what happened today in history. When we return, it'll be time for us to head straight to our first major conversation right here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.